Martian Band, and we're talking to the director of the uh, Tennessee State University Martian Band, Mr. Edward Graves. And of course, uh, uh, Director uh, Graves and Professor Graves, before we had our break, we uh, promised that we would come back and we would talk about that extraordinary uh, Tennessee State University Martian Band, the aristocrat of bands, I think it's called. Let's uh, have you uh, to uh, give us a little history about that uh, band and talk about it from the way that you'd like to talk about it during this, se this segment. Okay. The, the band, as we know it today, had its beginning when uh, Dr. Walter Davis, then president, uh, brought Mr. Chavis in to organize a band. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, during that time, they, uh, Mr. Chavis uh, came, was an innovator uh, with the marching band because he did things like adding lights mm -hmm. to the band members. They would turn the lights out in the stadium, and mm -hmm. the band members had lights on their feet and in their caps and things, which was very unique mm -hmm. at that time. And uh, uh, things went from there, which quite was very innovative. And, a Tennessee State's band was uh, quite famous for that. And at the time, they got a lot of national exposure by playing in the Capitol Classic in, in Washington, D.C. So after that, Mr. Chavis' tenure, uh, Mr. Frank Greer, who was my band director at Tennessee State, came in, I believe, in 1951 or so, and started the marching band. And uh, he band was, they called it Marching 100, I believe. And, during that particular time, we uh, band bought new uniforms. Dr. Davis was very instrumental in that. And they came up with the term the aristocrat of bands. Mm -hmm. and, uh, they fashioned it after the way that the band was dressed because uh, we had the change of uniforms and a lot of different mm -hmm. stuff that nobody else had. Mm -hmm. And of course, at the time, because of the, the band played jazz music, popular music, show tunes, mm -hmm. and classical music mm -hmm. uh, with, with a total array of uh, type of performances that were done, uh, the term uh, aristocrat of bands was applied. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Greer, during Mr. Greer's term, uh, band of course started its television uh, appearances at National Football League games, mm -hmm. uh, which was a big thing at that time. And during the time that I was there, we did a national television thing at, from Baltimore with Baltimore Colts. Uh, and then uh, the big biggie out of that. The Tennessee State's band was the first band from a historically black institution mm -hmm. to appear in an inaugural, presidential inaugural parade. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was in 1961, I believe, for President John F. Kennedy. Mm -hmm. And I was a student in the band at that time. Uh, so things continued. And then in 1979, uh, I was asked to come. And of course, we very eagerly mm -hmm. accepted and came and to rebuild the band program, so to speak. Um, uh, they had had some misfortune with a strike and a lot of different things that happened to cause the numbers to, to mm -hmm. fall a little bit. Mm -hmm. So the administration at that time was very eager to, to have a strong program, and we were fortunate to, to be able to come. Uh, we came with a, a, a former schoolmate here in the band, with Mr. Benjamin Kurt, mm -hmm. and I had, were working together in North Carolina. Mm -hmm. And we came in, and Mr. Thomas Davis, who's still with us, uh, uh, was here at the time, so he joined us, and we started. Uh, during the time since we've been here, we, we, we've been able to do several uh, national television appearances. Uh, we've done a TV movie, I believe it was called The Concrete Cowboy, something like that. So uh, it's, we, we played at several National Football League games, and since during that era, it was popular for college football games to be televised. So during that era, our band was featured on some of Tennessee State uh, football games that were televised live on ABC. Uh, we've been fortunate uh, to also to 1984, our marching band was invited to participate in a, the Mirage Bowl in Tokyo, Japan, uh, which was a, an outstanding opportunity for the band the university, the students, and for the band directors, you know, to be able to just, uh, mm -hmm. some of our students at that time had never been on a plane. Go to Tokyo. Go to Tokyo, 12-hour <laughs> nonstop mm -hmm. flight. So it, it was an outstanding adventure for the students. Uh, that same year, 1984 and uh, November, our jazz band under the direction of Benjamin Kirk was invited to participate in the, uh, I'm sorry, go back, that was July uh, of 1984. 
the jazz ensemble was invited to participate in the Montreux International Jazz mm -hmm. Festival in mm -hmm. Switzerland. And Mr. Kirk, in addition to that, after that festival concluded, took a quintet of students from that same ensemble uh, to Nigeria for 10 days on a mm -hmm. tour. So it was a wonderful opportunity for all of us and a wonderful education for our students to be able to mm -hmm. have that type of exposure. Mm -hmm. uh, since that time, uh, the band has been invited to participate in both of uh, President Clinton's inaugural parades. Mm -hmm. So uh, it was 30 years after my participating as, participation as a student, student. Mm -hmm. to be able to take the Tennessee State Band back as a director. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, we haven't been able to come down off of that <laughs> year. It's still a, an you, outstanding opportunity. You know, uh, I think that we have to admit that, uh, uh, that, that there's a tremendous deficit in terms of finding enough students uh, to participate in, uh, in the band, which is to say that uh, uh, it, it's going to be difficult unless more and more young people are educated uh, in music, that uh, music it does not hold the place that it once held. Uh, what, what, what can you say and what, what have you thought about in terms of what we ought to do in order to try to make uh, people more, uh, our young people more aware of music as such? Well, one of the things that we, we do is to try to, to expose uh, people to Tennessee State and, uh, through our travels with, with the band and uh, the type of contacts that we try to make into public schools mm -hmm. and to expose youngsters in, in all avenues or areas of the community mm -hmm. to our program, hoping that if some youngster would see our band perform in their elementary school or in their high mm -hmm. school, it might inspire somebody to want to do what mm -hmm. they see our youngsters do. Mm -hmm. uh, we've had some success with that, and we, we are constantly seeking uh, places for our youngsters to, to participate in mm -hmm. programs that might inspire some youngsters. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, it, it is difficult to find numbers mm -hmm. of, of people, and uh, in doing so, we, we have a a web of, uh, of contacts for recruitment of mm -hmm. students mm -hmm. uh, to attract them to Tennessee State and the type of exposure that we're getting in Memphis and with the national television and in Atlanta and other places helps a lot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and with the, the friends that we have, alumni mm -hmm. that are directing students to us mm -hmm. and of course like you said the biggest problem now is to try to encourage people to get involved in mm -hmm. music mm -hmm. and that's the biggest thing that we're trying to deal with now to encourage more students to want to be a part mm -hmm. of a musical organization and get a musical education. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, not people for necessarily that want to... Let me interrupt here. Yes. We'll be back with you following this short commercial break. We're talking to the director